Hello everybody, I wish you well. I hope you're doing uh, fairly okay. I'm existing. I am doing my best. <laughs> so, I wanted to at least attempt to move into a new format of video, or podcast, honestly, where I'm taking I Can't Shut Up Unless You Tell Me To, and actually doing something with it now. It's been... God, how long since this, has it been since I last put out an episode under this podcast? Jesus, March 22nd. Oh, Lord, we mama. <sighs> Anywho, I'm trying to get a podcast out daily, or semi-daily, and this is the first thing I'm going to be doing with this. Um, we're going to start by ha the way this format's going to roll is I'm going to do an intro, say how, how are you doing, and then um, I'm going to record segments throughout the day. That way um, I'm able to, you know, have something longer than just 10 minutes, something that allows you to listen to something that feels a little more meaningful that you can listen to throughout the, your, the entirety of your day. At least as far as I'm concerned. In admittedly sad news, we have to talk about um, uh, APIs and the end of Web 2.0. So, for those who don't remember what Web 2.0 is, let me paint a picture. See, back in the day, in the early, in the late 2010s, uh, or, or the twenty, or not twenty ten, so in the in the in the uh, mid to late two thousands, websites in a, in app in apps um, basically had these things called application programming interfaces. They or APIs. APIs are in fact what I personally build for my job, and a lot of these places like Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, all had public facing APIs that allowed people to build fun little tools. Tom Scott, the YouTuber, has a fun little um, um, a fun little video going into this in more depth. Uh, it's You can usually find it under his video, which is this video has insert number here amount of views, which, you know, is in itself an allegory to YouTube's API and that, that eventually that will break too. And why and what am I talking about APIs? Well, Bat so, after Elon Musk started charging, admittedly out the ass for the for the ability to create things using data begotten from the uh, you know the, their API, um, another large repository of internet history is now doing the same. Reddit is now apply is now applying a um, they're they're basically they're they're basically in that char announcing after Twitter you know charging exorbitant fees for their API they're now wanting to charge for API access as well and it's and there's a lot of people including you know the iOS app Apollo. Which is, you know, what people consider to be one of the best, if not the best, way to read Reddit on mobile, are saying that like the amount of API, like like like, it will price out. Like the problem with Twitter when what they did was the the API costs were so exorbitant that it effectively priced everybody out of the market. Because here's the thing about APIs interacting with things like social media. You like not everything that you build is going to and you'd use for it is going to be super duper useful. Sometimes they're just fun. There's bots that will that wait for make the, like the make it a quote bot, you know, which is a Twitter bot that will if you at make it a quote, it will yoink whatever somebody like the the tweet that somebody tagged that under with a picture of with the person's profile pic and a you know and it'll make a photo of it it's pretty cool but like you can't build things like that especially if they make no money and you don't have a business around them to offset the cost of the api calls and now reddit which is i would argue has been around longer and is an even larger repository for 
you know, internet history, um, is now doing this. So for, for, I want to, I want to, I want to like make it clear here that Twitter charges $42,000 for 50 million tweets. Now, don't get me wrong. 50 million tweets is a lot, but if you're like running a business, like that can be an exorbitant amount. And, you know, a site like Imager, a site similar to Reddit in its user base and media, like, you know, for, for 50 million API calls, it's $166. See, what Reddit is doing is because Twitter was able to charge an exorbitant amount for per API call. And let me see if I can pull up that call. So j just to be clear, for if you have a, are building an app that, you know, you want to, you know, build an app to like, just say you wanted to build a Twitter app or something that you could in theory, I don't know, every time someone tweets the word moist you just quote tweet it something stupid like that you can call it moist bot right you don't know how many times like something like that is going to get called but for a basic you know which can only like post 3,000 tweets a month and you know you can only like here if you it, it, it's it's disgusting. It's at this point I'm getting rambly because I'm just looking at the costs of what they're asking for a lot of this shit, and it is patently disgusting. So if you go to r slash like r slash Reddit, like the actual Reddit thing, um, they're basically I'm they're basically charging a lot more than what they need to to like. What places like Imager and, and even YouTube do with their API costs is they keep it low. Like, I could make something for personal use with YouTube and it would cost me probably a fraction of a dollar, if anything at all. But what Twitter ended up doing is they ended up hiking up the cost for API calls, pricing out like small developers out of the market, and I want to remind you that things like Twitter's API and Reddit's API are part of what make sites like these so fun. You know, you're able to like build something cool and like launch it and just go ha and go have fun. It's great, but you're screwed otherwise. I know this has been a rambly six, seven minute segment, but I just wanted to bring up this because. Web 2.0 allowed allowed us to allows us to have access to lots of really awesome, interesting pieces of technology that essentially now we're not going to have access to, and we're not going to be able to make anything new with it either, either, either bleh, because of corporate greed. The end of Web 2.0 is like the end of like like the the internet hasn't been you know, free f for a very long time. And the, en and the end of, like, cheap or free access to, like, APIs to build fun little tools and stuff, that's kind of, like, the last bastion of freedom on the internet. And it sucks. And it doesn't have to be this way. I wanted to take a second just to vent a little bit of frustration I have. I am cur like next week my job is going to be shuffling the teams. They're adding two new teams to our section with a new scrum lead or a new project manager, a new manager. And you know, they're sort of like we're learning all about that Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And I'm frustrated mainly because like the only reason I've been able to like be okay in this job is because I've had the support of amazing coworkers 
you know, who have kind of helped me pick up for my shortcomings because I've kind of been railroaded into, you know, picking up levels of work that I wasn't ready to and I've just been constantly playing catch up at my job. It's frustrating, you know, and I brought this up to my manager, albeit probably too late a month and a half ago. But even so, like, none of his behavior in terms of, like, he's, I just haven't gotten the support I need from him to, like, be better. And, you know, you, I know you can't trust your manager, you can't trust your employer, like, I get that, but it's like, the job market's scuffed right now. And I'm looking for other places, and in fact, the only reason I was still at this job was because the team I'm on is amazing. I just don't want to lose my this job and be caught unemployed, because at that point, I'm just going to end up live streaming for eight hours every day, and then living off my credit cards until like my credit cards run out, and then I kill myself. Like That's the reality I have of... <laughs> What's going to wait for me if I if, if I, I'm not able to, you know, get different employment? It just sucks. And I just threw up. Ugh, this day cannot get any worse. I hate everything. You know, one of the things that always kind of bugged me about, you know, the current Master Duel Tier Element meta is that it feels like the worst way to play the deck, you know, is is stock in my personal opinion. Like, the, like yes, you run, you can run the. I I I personally run Tier Element Sprite. Because one of the things I've noticed, especially with Bestials releasing in, in seven days, is that, you know, being able to do things without, you know, necessarily having to, you know, just effectively get the equivalent of a go fuck yourself is great. You know, yes, you if you don't play smart, you can potentially run the risk of of what is effectively um you can run the risk of what is effectively um essentially locking yourself into you know level twos before you're able to do everything you need to do but like more often than not i don't feel like that's really much of an issue when you're playing with the tier elements stuff and like you're getting to the higher levels like i gotta be honest it's really unfun to like you know, if you open worse than your opponent who's playing in the mirror, you're kind of, like, borked. But, like, being able to run an extra deck that runs all the tier element stuff, but also is able to run, like, some of the sprite stuff, too, is really awesome. Like, being able to end, like, end on, like, a, a fat board with, you know, Rook Kalos, Kaleida Heart, you know... And, you know, maybe, like, you know, want, like, uh, the uh, Salik in your thing is, is great. But also being able to pair that with the possibility of a, um, but being able to also pair that with something like a, you know, a combo of Elf and um, IP Masquerina on your field subsequently is also pretty awesome, if I'm being honest. And you're able to... Yes, yes, you are more likely to break it. Like, it's a little less consistent, but the amount of explosive end boards that you can get are great. Chara, my moderator, patently disagrees with me, which, you know, on some level, I tacitly agree with. You know, it's certainly not as strong, but, you know, the deck can, you know, survive against, you know, <laughs> you know, a set, um, what's it called? Uh, Dimension Fisher and still live to tell the tale. I'm supportive of it. I'm, you know, not against it in, in any way, shape, or form. And frankly, it's pretty awesome. I like it a lot. I say this as I, you know, go through my tier element line on my lunch break, even though I'm taking a split my lunch break in two here. Honestly, I'm just waiting for somebody to get back to me so I can finish my story. I don't 
understand what the fuck is going on in conservatives' brains. Like, listen, I understand, like, the layman is, like, the, I understand what's going on on, like, like, the high level. Like, the t- like the tier four conservatives, like a Ben Shapiro. Like, they're not even tier four, the tier fives, like the rich douchebags. The rich douchebags, their whole purpose is to stoke culture war nonsense for the purposes of effectively, of effectively, like, making it so working class people can't coalition build you know if you get a bunch of you know white working class people to hate you know black and brown and gay people or just just people who are just othered you know in their eyes you you then are able to like run away with all the money and i was just talking to a buddy of mine and she she said like oh today and like she 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 kind of like made a really valid point point being like What's going to end up happening economically is, is that it's going to get bad enough that like we're like that like the rich people are going to be like shaking in their boots because we're because like we're about to you know start chopping heads off and shit and then they're going to basically use the lattice of government to say all right fine universal health care universal housing you know yeah you don't have you don't like we're not going to hold the risk of homelessness over your head to force you to work jobs you hate anymore like yeah da, 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 da. like that's going to be the fucking thing you know and it's it's just seeing all of this nonsense with like the conservative culture war bullshit like only like realistically 25 percent of the country is like on board with this shit and it's and it's centralized in like 11 places it's insane and we're we're eventually going to get to a point where like that where like it does not matter how much they fucking hate black people or gay people it you know it doesn't matter how much they want their ta- they, they want to keep their son their 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 little village of sun downtown like eventually the economic issues are gonna fuck them in the ass so bad that they're just going to have to get on board. Like unfortunately, I'm not willing to wait that long because it's gonna like take for like what we'll lose in while waiting for old white racists to get over them fucking selves is wait is gonna be way too long, but. I mean, it's. It, it, I say this just to say, like, it's inevitable. It's going to happen eventually. It might not happen as quick as we want it to, and certainly as quick as it needs to happen. But fuck me if it's you know, you know, this isn't going to be the same way forever. Like, it already it already happened once. FDR's New Deal was the product of a bunch of rich assholes realizing, oh fuck, we're the U.S. is going to fall to a communist revolution if we don't fix our shit. And. That was what that was the that was the compromise of the New Deal. We pay, the government pays for people's jobs, it pays for social safety nets, it, it, it subsidizes housing for people, only white people, of course. And while, lo and behold, like rich people get to keep their fucking money. I don't know. It's just a fucking old thing. 